Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Cruel Death of Queen Victoria's Husband, Prince Albert Inside of the Blue Room at Windsor Castle on the 14th of December 1861, the husband of Queen Victoria died at the shocking age of 42. Prince Albert is remembered in history as the loyal and brilliant consort of Queen Victoria. He was her beloved husband. However, he was also a man who helped run the royal family, and he worked incredibly hard throughout his time and marriage to the Queen of Britain. He was at times considered a possible spy, and some people in the nation were suspicious of him, but when he died, there was a huge outpouring of sympathy and emotion for the Queen. He died very early, and it was hoped that he would accompany the Queen in her final years, but she grieved for Albert and never recovered or got over her loss. In her own death, Victoria looked forwards to one day being reunited with her husband. She would spend the rest of her life wearing black, but her husband had been ill for some time, and doctors warned that for some time that a slight fever could have killed the prince consort. But what is the story of his death? As mentioned, Prince Albert was not a very well man. His body was said to have been worn down to the point where he died at an early age, and he suffered from a gastric issue that caused the prince a significant amount of suffering. He would spend much of his time working for the Queen, and he worked long into the night, and it would have a significant impact on his health. Life with Victoria would also cause a lot of stress, and she was not the most sympathetic wife, as she would think he was a hypochondriac who was always complaining about his health. It's possible that the mental side effects of overwork and thinking about his health also did the prince no good. And as a child, he would suffer from many different colds and illnesses, which he could not get rid of. These would linger and affect his lungs and speech. But he was not the fittest man, as doctors would note how quickly he got tired during exercise, and that he would often look like he was about to collapse following a rather light exercise session. But doctors also noted Albert's stomach problems, and it was said that when he was a teenager, that he was not very strong and he suffered from a chronic tiredness. In fact, when he came to England to visit Queen Victoria for the first time in 1836, he did not set the best impression due to his tiredness. It was seen by the guests that Albert could not keep himself awake, and he fell asleep at the dinner table whilst all the other guests were still talking and eating, and he could not hold a conversation as he was falling asleep constantly. As a young man, he also suffered with oral issues such as toothache, sore throats and inflamed gums, but then he would suffer from dizziness and would often faint. When he was on water, he also got seasick, and the doctors realised that Albert would probably die earlier than he should have done, as he could not combat and fight illnesses very well. They thought that any simple disease or illness of the 19th century would finish off the prince, and his doctor wrote that if Albert ever falls sick of a low fever, then you will lose him. But this judgment was correct, and the prince also could not walk well, and he suffered with rheumatism. In conclusion, he was a prince who was not very well at all. But Victoria did little about this, and she didn't really take into account his health when the pair married, and she did not help his issues. When inside of the royal palaces, it was known that Victoria would not really feel the cold, and that she would demand that cold air would come into the palaces, meaning these were always cold, and Victoria was stronger than her husband, and the drafty palaces were not good for the health of Albert. He constantly moaned about being cold, and he would sit in the cold rooms of the palaces early in the morning, being wrapped up in blankets and rugs whilst his teeth chattered because of the cold. He could not keep warm, and this was not good for him. But during his marriage, he continued to have bad stomach problems, and Albert said that he had been born with these issues, and that he believed that these one day would kill him. He did not help himself, as he ate meals very quickly, and he often was bloated, and in his thirties, he put on a considerable amount of weight. And he did suffer from depression, as he was not his own man. He had to devote his life to the Queen and her service. 
Now Albert was not allowed to do anything for himself, and compared it himself at times to the donkey inside of Carisbrook Castle that constantly turns the water wheel. He spent time at different residences, including Balmoral, but he could not escape work and he would not relax. He sheltered his true feelings away from his wife at times, and he never revealed his true frustrations, but he also did not admit how ill he was to his wife. He did not want Victoria to see him in pain, and she would not deal with this well, as she would just dismiss this. When Victoria suffered from postnatal depression, she often unleashed her sharp tongue at her husband, and he got this abuse at times too from his wife. He continued to worry about his family and about government, and in his final years he suffered from insomnia, and also in 1853 contracted measles, which he caught from his children. This made him very ill, and doctors suggested that this may have caused inflammation of his brain, but as mentioned, some people in Britain did not like Albert. As the country was involved in the Crimean War, the population believed that he was a Russian spy and that he was passing information to the enemy or had infiltrated the royal family. But this was not true, and these accusations greatly upset Albert, as he had only ever done what he believed was the best for the British people and for their monarch. But he continued to work hard and said in his final years that I never remember having so much work to do as I have lately and the work he was doing tired him out. Victoria told him to get on with it and to stop complaining, but he was very different to his wife. He was still suffering with stomach cramps and in 1861 was very down and depressed and he believed that death was coming and that he had contracted typhoid fever and this matched his symptoms. Today it's most probable that Albert would be diagnosed with Crohn's disease and some at the time thought he was suffering with tuberculosis due to the stomach problems. But these symptoms of Crohn's can be made much worse when someone is stressed, and in 1861, Albert was suffering greatly. Victoria's mother had died, and his wife was greatly upset, and there was a lot of gossip about his son, the heir, who was having many scandalous affairs with high-profile women. His cousin also died, and there were no treatments to Crohn's, but in the December of 1861, Albert would succumb to his poor health once and for all. On the 9th of December, royal physician William Jenner diagnosed him with typhoid fever, and Albert was not very well. Within five days he would be dead. He was resting up inside of the Blue Room at Windsor Castle, and he then died there accompanied by his wife and five of their children. Prince Albert was just 42 when he died, and in his final moments his fever got very strong and his hands and face got darker. There were spots on his abdomen and his final days were very rough, and the prince suffered very badly. He would constantly throw up, and he was delirious, and he also struggled for breath. Victoria still believed he would recover, but each day she saw her husband getting more ill and closer to death. He had not looked well for a long time, and he continued to work until he could do so no more. But following his death, there was a lot of sympathy for Albert and also for Victoria, as the people would see the suffering of their monarch. Victoria was changed forever by Albert's death, and she ordered the rooms that he would stay in to be forever kept as they were when he died. She made sure that towels were changed each day in these rooms and that hot water was to be taken to his rooms as if he was still there. But Albert's funeral took place on the 23rd of December 1861 at St George's Chapel. Following this, he would be left in the royal vault until the mausoleum at Frogmore was finished. His remains would then be moved and Victoria was buried with him. But Albert was a prince consort who was brilliant, and he supported the Queen with everything she needed. But he was a man of very poor health. He was a good man, and he gave lots of money to charity, and tried to change education for the better. But Victoria would outlive him by decades, after he died at the early age of 42. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.